Handheld gaming for decades has been the go-to way to play games on the go. From the Game & Watch series starting in 1980 to the Nintendo Switch in 2017. With many notable systems such as the Game Boy, Nintendo DS, and PSP, with each system having its fair share of iconic games. But until around the 2010s, handheld gaming has been on a sharp decline in popularity among people, and generally becoming a smaller and less competitive market. With many developers and third-party developers moving on from the industry, if companies such as Nvidia and Razer losing interest, even Sony announced their plans last year to discontinue the PlayStation Vita. Nintendo eventually were the only company keeping the industry alive to this day, with the Nintendo Switch series and its amazing selection of first-party titles, from Mario Kart to Zelda to Super Smash Bros, with their 3DS family of consoles being discontinued recently. Although other companies are starting to develop handheld systems themselves, such as the GPD XD+, this part of the video game industry has without a doubt become less popular within the past 20 years, with many different reasons to explain its fall. So, this begs the question, what exactly happened to handheld gaming? In this video, I'm going to try and answer that question by covering the rise and fall of this industry, and most importantly, I'm going to explain why this once powerful industry has decreased in popularity over the past 10 years. Just before this video starts, I just want to quickly mention something. Around 97% of you who watch my videos are not actually subscribed. Clicking the subscribe button helps me and the channel out massively, and it only takes a second. It's quick, easy, free, and helps me a lot. And you can always unsubscribe if you want to. Please don't do that. Anyway, back to the video you clicked on. To help us get a better understanding to where this industry fell, we need to take a look back at the rise of handheld gaming. The first successful handheld consoles was without the doubt the Nintendo Game & Watch series, beginning in 1980. The Game & Watch series offered multiple systems each with a unique game, which were produced until 1991, with a special Super Mario Bros. 30th anniversary system releasing this year. The series offered multiple basic games on each system, from Ball, to Donkey Kong, to even Super Mario Bros, with each system having a built-in clock, hence the name Game & Watch. Although the Game & Watch was really the first successful handheld console series, we're going to skip over and cover the first dedicated handheld system to completely dominate the industry, known as the Nintendo Game Boy. The Game Boy launched back in 1989 and was really the first majorly successful handheld system, with its iconic green unbacklit LCD display. It was essentially an NES in your pocket, although was slightly less powerful of course. The Game Boy was successful for many reasons, its iconic compact design, marketing, and game library from Tetris to Pokemon Red and Blue. Although the most significant reason for its success was its cheap $89 price, and how it only consumed 4 AA batteries, although consuming 4 batteries is still quite a lot. However, the cheap price tag came at a cost, with the system lacking a backlit display. But hey, that's one of the main things which made the Game Boy nostalgic for many people. The success of Nintendo's Game Boy obviously brought competitors, with Tiger releasing its series of handheld systems over the years, way up to the Gamecom, although these systems never put a dent in the Game Boy's market share. Atari even jumped into the market a few months after the Game Boy's release of the Lynx in 1989 although like before, it never really gave the Game Boy any competition. The first real competitor to the Game Boy, however, was without a doubt the Sega Game Gear, which released in 1990. The Game Gear offered many advantages over the Game Boy, with better hardware and, of course, a colour backlit display, which Sega used as one of the main selling points of the Game Gear, as seen in the system's advertising. Get a Game Gear Supersonic Sports Pack, a colour portable Game Gear, carrying case and two hit games. The Game Gear had its fair share of great titles too, from Sonic Triple Trouble to multiple Genesis game ports. A smaller classic series of the Sega Game Gear is also launching this year, known as the Game Gear Micro Series, although it's unfortunately exclusive to Japan. Anyway, the technical superiority of the Game Gear to the Game Boy, however, did add up some negatives about the system. First one being how it consumed six AA batteries, which barely gave it a few hours charge, as well as its larger size to the Game Boy and how it costed $150 almost double the Game Boy's price, which arguably drove the system down the route of failure, selling around 10 million units. This system was hardly a threat to Nintendo's dominance, although it did bring some competition into the handheld gaming industry. Nintendo later released the Game Boy Pocket in 1996 for $70, which consumed two AA batteries and had an even more compact design, which was really the last nail in the coffin for the Game Gear, being discontinued a year later. Still, the system was a great handheld, it's just a shame how it wasn't very successful. 
Sega did, however, launch two other handhelds alongside the Game Gear, known as the Mega Jet in 1994 and a Nomad a year later. The Mega Jet was essentially a small handheld Sega Mega Drive for aeroplanes and car journeys, hence the name Mega Jet, which is exclusive to Japan, with it having to be outputted to a TV. Although it was discontinued a few months after releasing, the Sega Nomad was another portable Sega Genesis in a small compact design for the US, with a full backlit colour display. Both handhelds played full Genesis cartridges and were very ahead of their time, although they didn't succeed for a number of reasons. The Nomad had multiple reasons for failure, two being that it hogged six batteries like the Game Gear, and the battery life was relatively short. The price was also quite steep compared to its competitors at around $180. A lot of Nomads stuck around for 4 years, being discontinued in 1999. Mobile phones also around the mid-90s started to have included games, such as Nokia starting to include Snake with their phones, although they offered much worse graphical capabilities and was barely a threat to the industry at this point. Moving on, Nintendo released the Game Boy Color in 1998, which came in multiple colours instead of the Game Boy Standard Grey, more power, and a slimmer design, and of course, an upgraded colour display, which still was lacking a backlight though. Also consuming less batteries in the Game Boy, only two AA's this time. The system was a major improvement compared to the previous Game Boy, with even more iconic titles being released for the system over the years, such as Zelda Link's Awakening and Pokemon Gold and Silver. The system even offered backwards compatibility with the Game Boy. The Game Boy series absolutely crushed competitors in the 90s, such as the Neo Geo Pocket, Gamecom and the Wonderswan, with the Game Boy series selling just less than 120 million units worldwide. The early 2000s rolled in, and the portable gaming industry continued to rise, with Nintendo releasing the Game Boy Advance in 2000. Nintendo's first 16-bit handheld, essentially a SNES in your pocket. The system was far superior technically compared to Nintendo's previous handheld systems, with a new design instead of the Game Boy's traditional rectangular design. Newer revisions of the system such as the Game Boy Advance SP in 2003 and Micro in 2005 both included major improvements, such as rechargeable batteries. The SP also had a frontlit display, with a laser model having a backlight, with the Micro also having a backlit display. The Game Boy Advance series also had improved sound, and still offered backwards compatibility of previous Game Boys, with the original Game Boy Advance launching for just $99. The Game Boy Advance, like its predecessors, dominated the industry, with some of its most notable titles being Zelda the Minish Cap, Metroid Fusion, Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire, Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga, Mario Advance series, and of course the first ever Mario Kart game on a handheld system. The Game Boy Advance series throughout its lifespan sold around 81 million units and still managed to crush competitors such as the Neo Geo Pocket Color and Nokia Engage. The Nokia Engage, although not being remarkably successful, was a combination of a handheld game console and a phone, which was way ahead of its time. Later phones would have the ability to play good quality games. This would become a major part of the industry, but to getting a bit of ahead of ourselves, so let's go right back into the mid 2000s. This generation of handheld gaming arguably from my perspective, was not only my generation, but the peak of the handheld gaming industry's popularity. 2004 saw the release of Nintendo DS. This generation of Nintendo's handhelds ditched the Game Boy name, and remarkably had two screens, one being touchscreen of the use of the DS Pen, and also utilised the clamshell design like the Advance SP. It also featured wireless connectivity with Nintendo Wi-Fi connection and download play, along with a microphone and upgraded hardware, also being backwards compatible with the Game Boy Advance, being priced at around $150 at launch, later dropping to $130 in 2005. The DS was a revolutionary handheld, allowing for a new influx of titles which utilised its features, such as Pokemon Heart Gold, New Super Mario Bros, Mario Kart DS, Mario 64 DS, Zelda Phantom Hourglass, and of course Nintendox, which I'm mentioning because it utilises some Nintendo DS's new features. Nintendo, however, didn't cruise through this generation unlike previous ones. This generation brought Nintendo's next major competitor, and that was Sony. After becoming top dog in the home console industry with its PlayStation consoles, Sony decided to jump into the handheld gaming industry with the PlayStation Portable, also known as the PSP. Previously announced in 2003 and released in 2004, the PSP offered much better media capabilities than the Nintendo DS, also being technically superior. It was essentially a portable PlayStation 2, also utilising UMDs, small discs which it used instead of cartridges. Like the DS, this system also offered Wi-Fi support. The system later in its lifespan also got access to the PlayStation Network, as well as the PlayStation Store. The PSP offered great titles, such as Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker, God of War Sparta, Little Big Planet, 
and Daxter, a spin-off of the PS2 series, Jack and Daxter. The PSP had a higher price tag than the Nintendo DS, being priced at $250. However, like previous ones, Nintendo still managed to dominate this generation, with the DS's unique features and dual screen design, although the PSP wasn't too far behind. Nintendo released revisions of the DS over the years, such as the DS Lite in 2006 for $130, introducing a slimmer design, and the DSi in 2008 for $170, with the DSi most notably having a new operating system, with new applications and features such as the DSi Sharp and Flipnote, and also having two built-in cameras. However, this generation dropped Game Boy Advance backwards compatibility, and also added an SD card slot, and having a larger XL variant for $190. The PSP, however, had many different revisions over the years, with the most notable being the PSP Go in 2009, ditching the UMD drive, and PSP Street in 2011. The PSP Go also received a spiritual successor in 2011, known as the Xperia Play, an Android phone featuring PSP controls. This handheld slash phone would also show the future of where the industry was heading, which I'll talk about shortly. This generation may seem like the most successful generation, with the DS at the end of its life selling a total of 150 million units, and the PSP selling a total of 80 million. However, it showed a brand new threat which was on the horizon, mobile gaming. Mobile phones since even around the early 2000s have been getting more powerful, although the games are nowhere near as impressive as what the DS and PSP had to offer, though they were progressively getting better. 2007, however, saw the first real threat, the iPhone. This phone features the first ever all-touchscreen design. It was slim, could play MP3s, watch movies, and had a ton more functionality, with the price of around $500. Eventually, 2008, though, was what I reckon was the first major blow to the industry, was the launch of the App Store and Android Market, later being rebranded to Google Play. Both stores had a large variety of affordable, addictive games, which started to take the world by storm. In 2010, the launch of the affordable iPod Touch really hurt the industry, as more kids instead of wanting the DS or PSP, wanted iPod Touches. The iPad's launch also affected the industry, along with the rise of Android devices. All these factors over the course of the next few years would affect the industry massively. Nintendo and Sony, however, in 2011, showcased their next generation of handheld devices. With Nintendo releasing the successor to the DS, known as the 3DS, and Sony releasing the PlayStation Vita, the PSP's successor. The 3DS introduced a new illusional 3D mode, which allowed you to view 3DS games in 3D without the need of 3D glasses. Although it may have caused headaches, it was still a cool feature. The 3DS offered more powerful hardware, Street Pass, Mies from the Wii, AR, Face Raiders, and without forgetting the eShop, a brand new online store similar to the DSi Shop. The 3DS had some pretty awesome titles throughout its lifetime, from Super Mario 3D Land, Mario Kart 7, Animal Crossing New Leaf, Tomodachi Life, and much, much more. The original model of the 3DS launched for around $250. On the other hand, Sony's new handheld, the PS Vita, offered significant upgrades over the original PSP, with full PSN support. Horse, Bluetooth, 6-axis motion sensor, a camera, and a touch-sensitive area behind the console. A 3G version of the console was also available, which allowed the PS Vita to connect to the internet whilst being away from Wi-Fi. The Vita had a lot of cool games on it, with some great titles such as Persona 4 Golden, Velocity 2X, and many, many more throughout its lifetime. The PS Vita also launched for $250. Nvidia also entered the market with the Shield Portable in 2013, a portable Android handheld gaming device. Although, it wasn't really competing with Nintendo and Sony, it was still a unique device and showed the direction Nintendo was heading, similar to the PSP Go. Razer also revealed a concept for a handheld Windows device in 2011, although the project has been postponed indefinitely. The 3DS and PSP from the start had bumpy launches, selling somewhat little units. Nintendo addressed the 3DS's bumpy launch by lowering the price and introducing the XL variant in 2012, which helped increase sales for the console. A cheaper 2D-only console without the clamshell design, known as the Nintendo 2DS, was launched in 2013, along with the new Nintendo 3DS in 2015, featuring upgraded internals. A new revision of the 2DS was also introduced in 2017, known as the new Nintendo 2DS XL. Sony, on the other hand, lowered the price of the Vita and launched a slimline model in 2014. It's predicted that the PS Vita only sold around 10 million units, a large decrease compared to its predecessor. The 3DS family also sold around 75 million units. Although it was quite successful, it was a large decrease compared to the DS's total sales. 
So you may be wondering, what caused this major decrease in sales during the 2010 generation of handheld consoles? Well, the major culprit is mobile gaming. Mobile gaming on phones and tablets has become more and more mainstream during this generation. Many people just lost interest in dedicated handheld gaming consoles, and with phones and tablets becoming more powerful and somewhat more affordable, they could do just as much, in fact more than what handheld consoles could do. Streaming around this time was also starting to become more mainstream, where you could stream full console games to your phone, which showed that handheld gaming was starting to become less relevant, with more people being interested in just playing games on their phone. Over the years, this may have taken its toll on Sony, but both Nintendo and Sony kept fighting on, with the Nintendo 3DS a family still selling well, with Nintendo's amazing first-party game support on the device. But like I said before, the industry was becoming less and less relevant over the next few years. Sony in the end pretty much lost interest in the PS Vita, with it officially being discontinued in 2019, and Sony fully focusing their resources on the PlayStation 4 and upcoming PS5. If you think Sony will ever make a successor to the PS Vita, they did officially announce they are no longer interested in the handheld business, making the chances of a future PlayStation handheld very unlikely. Nintendo, however, did start developing mobile games, although recently gave up their interest in them. With the 3DS and Wii U sales not being at Nintendo's expectations, they thought to keep their business going in both handheld and console industries, they decided to combine them both and introduced the Nintendo Switch in 2017, a brand new home console which could also be played handheld. The Switch retailed for $299 and featured major hardware upgrades and other defining features such as the tablet-like console having the ability to become docked and become a home console. Console. If the detachable Wiimote like Joy-Cons, once attached to the system and charged, the Switch can be played in handheld mode. The Switch after launch instantly became a success, with titles such as Mario Odyssey and Zelda Breath of the Wild. The console in a matter of three years managed to sell almost 70 million units and become one of Nintendo's best selling consoles of all time. Nintendo even released the Switch Lite in 2019, being a fully dedicated handheld Nintendo Switch, showing that Nintendo still had interest in the handheld industry. However, with the Switch's launch, saw Nintendo's interest in the 3DS family start to die down, with Nintendo eventually discontinuing production of the 3DS family in 2020, officially marking the end of the DS's life, a true end of an era. Now, with Nintendo being the last warrior left on the handheld gaming battlefield, awaiting its next opponent of the Switch Lite, and other competitors having exited the industry, what happened to handheld gaming? And why is hardly anyone, excluding Nintendo, interested in developing handheld devices anymore? Like I said before, the culprit is the rise of mobile gaming. With phones and tablets being able to do so much more these days, people just lost interest in buying dedicated handheld consoles if their phones could just play games anyway. Most people just didn't see the point carrying multiple devices around with them. Newer phones these days are even more powerful than the Nintendo Switch. With the points I've made, some of you may be wondering, is handheld gaming totally irrelevant now? It is very noticeable the industry is not popular as it once was back in the early 2000s and 90s. However, I would say it's definitely not dead by any means. The Nintendo Switch has shown that success in the handheld industry is still very possible, especially with the Switch Lite. Interest in retro handheld mini consoles is also started to become more popular. With the Game Gear Micro series, Nintendo's 35th anniversary Mario Game & Watch, Tiger releasing their handhelds, and with the upcoming Playdate handheld, I can see more classic handheld consoles being released in the future. I believe that the handheld gaming industry may never reach the popularity it once had, however, Swan may challenge Nintendo again with a Switch-like device, or a state-of-the-art streaming handheld. Who knows what the future of handheld gaming could have in store for us, but if there's one thing for certain, it's definitely not going away anytime soon. Now that you know what happened to the industry and its future, I think it's time to wrap up this video. If you enjoyed it and want to help support my channel, and want to support the content I make, please consider subscribing to the channel and leaving a like, as it really does help a lot. Sharing the video online with people you know helps a lot too. Make sure to check out my Twitter and Discord server, links to both are in the description. Which handheld console did you grow up with? Let me know in the comments. Mine is definitely Nintendo DS. Special thanks to my friend Fez who edited today's video. Make sure to check out his channel, link in the description. As always, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.